Are we gonna be a one take wonder? Welcome back to another episode of Raw Built. I'm your host, Ro Dang it. My glasses are smudged. Hi, Robert, uh, 25, willing to shave. I could just do the total like, the YouTube version of this, which is like. Hey everybody, what's up? It's your boy, Raw Built. <laughs> Don't forget to hit that like, smash that subscribe button. We're gonna catch you on the next episode of Raw Built. Oh my gosh. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Rob Built. I'm your host, Rob, and uh, you know what? Before we get into it, a little clarification is needed as half of you, including my friends and family, still pronounce the YouTube channel incorrectly. The channel is called Rob Built, okay? My name is Robert. I call myself Rob. Robert. Rob. Built things. I build things. Rob. Built. It. Not row built, you know? It's not like I'm not wearing a robe, although I do really enjoy the occasional robe. It is raw built, okay? I'm not mad, but I will murder you in my closet if you say row built again. Today's the stain edition. We're gonna be refinishing all of the cabinets in my Airstream. And when I say we, I mean the people that I hired because I'm a real busy man. Actually, I will be helping out for the most part, but I have finally hired a crew and uh, this is the very first video in the actual renovation of the Airstream. I'm super excited. Stick around and let's uh, let's do the thing. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna restain the cabinetry because we have to sand down every single piece of wood in this trailer and then restain it and then repoly it. And in that process, uh, not only are we repolying it, but we also have to sand and scuff up that poly, and wipe everything off. There's just gonna be so much sand involved with this process that I wanna do that all first that we can clean up all dust and then we can tape everything off, paint the ceilings, and once the ceilings are painted, then we can start doing everything else. So I'm not necessarily sure that this is the best approach, but for me personally, I like to do all the messiest and dirtiest jobs first and then work my way up to the smaller jobs that aren't really quite so much of a mess. So with that, let's get into the actual staining and what the game plan is here. So before we get too far into this video, I know I said it last video, but I want to say it again. I finally hit 50,000 subscribers after being on YouTube for 11 months and I'm truly grateful and humbled that you guys watch my content. If you get anything out of these videos and you want to support me in a really small way, there are a couple ways you can do that. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and the little bell button next to it if you want to be notified anytime that I release any of my Airstream updates or my tiny house updates and lastly you can leave a comment down below something like that is so simple but helps me out with the YouTube algorithm you can tell me anything you want like what's something that you like about my channel do you think I have a punchable face have you ever finished a Chipotle burrito in a group setting so fast that everybody judged you for eating it so fast anything like that's totally gonna work and help me out or you can share this video for other people to see and then in regards to courses those are I'm working on them I have two courses coming out the fundamentals of Airbnb and how to start a glamping business if you're interested in learning more about those courses sign up with my link down below for my course update list and as soon as they're out, you'll be the first to know. All right, let's get back into the renovation. All right, it's staining day. So here's what we're gonna do. We're basically gonna start sanding this, the cabinetry, the wood on the cabinetry with a very fine grit sandpaper, like a 220 or a 320, specifically because we don't wanna use a sanding machine, a sander. We don't wanna use a sander on this because the veneer is so thin that if the, the power of a sander will actually rip right through that, then we'd have to do a lot more work to this plywood. We don't wanna do that. So we wanna just keep it light and kind of expose the raw nature of the wood so that we can start testing out stains. So very luckily, the stain doesn't actually run that deep on this, so it's not that hard to actually uh, kind of sand all the, the poly and the color off of this. So this should be relatively quick. I think it's gonna take us about a day to do this. All right, after sanding everything down, we started testing out stains and we found that magical stain that matches the original stain of the actual interior of the Airstream. What is this one called? Gunstock. Gunstock, check it out. Okay, so we're actually sanding the uh, the metal finishes, like the lights and the hinges and all the metal kind of trim work on the inside. And then now we're gonna paint them and see what color we're gonna do. I'm kind of thinking of gold right now, so we're gonna just spray paint it and see how it looks. I don't really like the way gold spray paint looks, but if it looks good, then we'll roll with it. If not, then we're gonna go with, with a satin black. I actually think it looks pretty good. I think that looks gold. Like I said, I don't really like gold spray paint, but I actually think this looks pretty realistic. It's not bad. Not bad at all. This is a very long, long process. But the final product is gonna be beautiful, and I know that. This is one of those moments where I miss my orbital sander because my little fingies, they hurt. <laughs> but it's fine, it's fine. Eyes on the prize, Robert. Eyes on the prize. 
So the doors are starting to dry, the stain is setting and they are looking really nice. I actually didn't realize that these doors had such nice wood grain to them, the cabinet doors that is. Slowly but surely they are coming along tomorrow, hopefully we can apply the shellac, the shellac, poly, whatever, and uh, then we'll have new doors again. All right, so a little bit of an update here. We got Rue here. All of the doors are pretty much done being stained. And then we've started actually spray painting all the metal pieces and all the metal trim. Hey, excuse you. All the metal pieces and all the metal trim. So we're gonna go with gold kind of uh, accents throughout the actual interior of it. Ooh, this is hard with the baby in my hand. But as you can see, the stain is actually coming up quite beautiful. It actually looks better than it did before. It looks just just like the day it was purchased in 1965. That's how old this door is, isn't that crazy? Okay, and then as you can see, we have our lights over here too. Um, we just hit this with a couple of coats of spray paint. There's definitely a better way to do that, but considering it's not really ever gonna get used or touched very often, I think spray paint's fine. You just have to make sure that you sand it and clean it well, and then you keep hitting it with several coats. Uh, this needs a little bit of work. But in between coats, I like to sand with a 320 grit, get it nice and smooth again, and then hit it with one final coat. And then all of our trim on all the cabinetry here, is, this is actually like the worst spot to do this, but um, we're painting all that black. So there will be black metals, gold metals, and then some kind of satin nickel metals. I'm not really, I was never really a big fan of meshing and mixing a bunch of different metal colors, but I think it's fine. The more I grow as a designer, the more I'm cool with mixing all the different colors and metals and everything like that. What do you think, Rue? What do you think, my little potato? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so small update. All of the cabinets have been stained. We'll show that at the very end. But now we're actually, we've prepared everything. We've prepared all the surfaces. We've put plastics up, tarps, because it's, it's paint day. I'm really excited. We're going to be painting this thing. It's going to completely transform the interior. So we're going to start off with a zip Zinser primer so that it can actually stick to the ceilings. And then after that's all primed and dried and ready to go, then we're gonna go in with kind of like an olive muted forest green type of color. I'm still kind of deciding on all that, but hopefully in a couple hours, I got a white Airstream on the inside and it's gonna completely open the space. And then I'm gonna completely close it up by painting it dark green. But it's not really about making it feel more open. It's actually more about setting a mood and making it feel moody and vibey in here. So I'm really excited. Right now what we're doing before we paint is we're actually filling in all the rivets on the ceiling because a couple of them came out or were taken out previously. So we're going in, making sure that we're touching up all the different surfaces before we paint the first coat of primer. All right, let's go. So we're opening up all the holes right here and then we're gonna put rivets in with a rivet gun. Rivets are really cheap. The rivet gun was like $20. All right, I think we're ready to paint. Let's do this thing. Even with just a little bit of white paint, this wallpaper is looking a thousand times better than the old nasty aged tan that was on here before. So I feel bad painting over the original color, but I really think it's gonna look way better once we actually paint it green. So I went a little, I got a little too comfortable with it and I should have put the, the sprayer further back because now it's all clogged up in one little spot, but we'll sand it out, it'll be all right. All right, tape came off accidentally, painted the floor, but it'll be all right. But as I said, it's all coming together. It's looking white, looking great. I'm really excited about the final product. Vlogging here on the run with a baby in hand. So we are painting the Airstream today. Bye. Typically what you would wanna do is buy a bunch of different paint samples, which I have right here. You would buy as many paint samples as you can and then, that's <laughs> the worst framing ever. And then you basically start painting different little patches in your kind of area, your wall, your Airstream to decide what color you want exactly. Well, the problem with that is I don't have the time to do that and I didn't wanna spend like $20 on paint samples. So I kind of went with my gut on this and I went with what's called Russian olive and I think it's a nice color. I was going for a muted kind of forest green, which I think is pretty much just an olive. So we're about to go paint the inside. Let's go see how it looks with primer. Okay, the place is primed up and holy cow, it looks so good. It looks so much better than it did with that, the original tan wallpaper. And I'm sure that wallpaper looked pretty good whenever it was first, you know, in the Airstream, but it's over 50 years old, I think. You know, that math checks out, 1965, <laughs> 220, 70 years old? Seven, <laughs> let me do this real fast before I look like an idiot on camera. 35 plus another 20, 35 <laughs> plus another 20, yeah, it's 55 years old. It's 55 year old wallpaper. So it is to be expected that 
the wallpaper was gonna look old and dingy, but just having it white honestly makes me, gives me second thoughts about painting it green just because it looks so amazing and open in here. What do you think? Should I paint it green? Am I a fool for painting it green? Let me know in the comments below, but my gut says we're going with Russian olive and I'm super excited for how that's gonna look today. We're gonna be done with the painting. And then like I have a whole new Airstream because my cabinets are all restained. I'm gonna get new countertops next week. And that's it, like this Airstream was not as hellish as I thought it was gonna be. Like I've seen so many videos of people that have taken on these projects and bit off more than they can chew and I was ready for that but honestly it's kind of working out so far uh, labor for this was originally 3,000 but there is a miscommunication as always so it's gonna end up costing about four thousand dollars for the general labor and then I'm hiring a countertop guy to come he's gonna charge me 950 for the countertops and then I got a plumber coming to help me with the small thing I imagine that'll be a couple hundred dollars so far I've spent about twelve hundred dollars on paint tape paper supplies screws all that kind of stuff so total, we're looking at the seven to $8,000 mark, which is actually under my original estimate. That doesn't include furnishings or anything like that, but progress is happening and I'm really excited. So uh, we'll cut now to painting the Airstream. Does that, does that work? Cool. I always ask to put the first set of paint anytime that anyone is painting for me because I want to know if my paint choice is gonna work out before they get carried away and paint the whole place. So I've already started doing a first pass on here. It's kind of like a military green olive, like I said, but so far I'm really liking it. So let's, let's see how it looks whenever I start filling out this little space right here. Like I said, I mean, I just kind of went, you typically buy a lot of swatches at Home Depot, a bunch of different samples, and then you paint different sections to see which color feels the best to you. I didn't necessarily have the time to do that. We're kind of, you know, we're over time here, and so I really want to get it done. So I just picked Russian Olive with my gut feeling. And my gut feeling so far is that this is going to work, and it's going to look really, really good. Okay, we've made a lot of progress on the painting. It's pretty jarring at first because it is very green. Not as green as I thought it was gonna be, but seeing it in so much uh, all over the walls, it's like, it's jarring, it's different. But I know that once I put the white countertops in and the mattresses and all the furnishings that are gonna light it up and that, that wallpaper that's gonna be on the cabinets, I know that it's gonna really pop and be nice and airy in there. Well, maybe not nice and airy, but definitely what I was envisioning, which is spacious and moody. So let's go, let's check it out. man like I said it's very green it's like avocado Russian olive is the official name of the paint by bear and it's got the primer and everything and even though I had the primer already included in it I still wanted to prime the actual walls because yeah with this type of texture you just don't want to play around with it so I got what's called the zinzer primer and that pretty much sticks on to anything so that way this paint is pretty much guaranteed to like stay on forever but it's it's looking awesome check it out Okay, so while that's all being painted, we're working on the screens that are gonna go on the inside. Unfortunately, this has to be custom built and all of the different screen panels and uh, frame pieces came in brown, which just isn't gonna jive with like the colors that I'm going with. So we had to spray paint every single screen, but they're being custom made now. Here's a little bit of what it looks like. So he has to cut them all out with a miter saw, assemble the frame, and then he puts the actual netting on it and cuts it with a knife, and then he has to put basically a rubber kind of gasket all around, but you know, it's looking pretty good. So we're gonna have black frames that are gonna be a very nice accent to the interior of the actual Airstream. Remember, it's all green in there. I'm doing golds and blacks in terms of all of the different trim pieces that we're doing, but over here, for the most part, this is all looking very slick. It's very nice. I've never actually seen a screen get made, so it's very cool. All right, so we have made a lot of progress. The entire Airstream is officially green. We're about a week later, and now we're removing all of the plastics and everything from the actual Airstream itself. So this is the most oddly satisfying part of the entire uh, build is taking off all the plastics and just kind of seeing how it comes to life at the very end here. So this is our original light. I could change it, but I don't want to because as I said a million times, I'm trying to keep the Airstream as original as humanly possible. We've restained all the wood here, so you can see kind of how it all comes together once everything is all stained. We've rebuilt this little uh, shelf right here too. And there we have it. As you can see, this is kind of like a cherry color. This looks so good up against the green. I didn't really imagine that it would pop so much in a, in a way that I really liked it. Again, another oddly satisfying part here, taking off the tape. I was just given the, the tip by my man Fernando here to take off the tape as slowly as possible or else you're gonna rip off the paint 
And we don't want to do that because we spent so long prepping this sucker to get painted. The last thing you want to do is have to go back and touch up anything because touching up is a pain. Touching up is a pain because we use a sprayer on it, so matching up those lines is near impossible on something like this. Yeah, I know what I'm doing sometimes. Boom. The white versus the green and the browns. Oh, we're looking good. As you can see, the inside of the Airstream is all green here. These are the uppers. We're gonna be wallpapering this in the next episode. Um, actually, <laughs> this color doesn't look so bad anymore now that it's up against the green, but I'm gonna be wallpapering it with a mid-century modern wallpaper. We'll put it right, right here. It's gonna have a little bit of pink in it too, which I think will add a nice little design touch. Nice little accent color to the entire Airstream. And we actually just refinished the, the bathroom tub area with a white glaze coating. Oh my goodness. We have all lost brain cells from how bad that stuff smells, but check out how awesome this bathroom looks. So I don't know if you can remember, but whenever we were doing this, this was kind of like a really nasty tan color, and now it's drying right now, so it looks a little patchy. Actually, you can kind of see it right over here. Is That's the old color, we have to touch this up right now. That's the green, that's the previous color of the tub, and that's the new white, so it's looking nice and sparkly in here. Fernando has killed it the last couple of days. If you need an Airstream renovation in Los Angeles, this is the guy to call. Hey guys. Tell them to like and subscribe. <laughs> now that I've talked about this for two weeks, let's get to the part that you're actually interested in, which is the B-roll of the final transformation. Cut to B-roll now. And that will wrap up today's episode of Raw Built. Thank you so much for watching. What did you think of the uh, $8,000 transformation? What design choices would you do? What design choices that I did do you hate? Let me know what you think of my wallpaper choice right here and if it's something that you would do yourself. Like, subscribe, comment. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're gonna have another episode of this Airstream where we're changing out the granite countertops or doing the wallpaper. And then in the very final video, we're gonna be staging this sucker. So stay tuned for that. But for now, we'll catch you on the next episode of Raw Built.